Hi, my name is Nadia Lucio Amitsbøl, and I have been working as a scientist at Topsoil for the past seven years. Today, I would like to introduce you to our test facilities and the way we test feedstocks in R&D. At Topsoil R&D, within the refinery area, we have 38 pilot units, which comprises more than 100 reactors. As we are an old company with a strong history for R&D, some of the units are old, but still going strong, while some are new or simply newly renovated to suit our current research needs. At our facilities, we have both units specific for catalyst development and units used for process and performance studies. These units are also being used for client testing. The catalyst screening units are typically units with more parallel reactors in a common oven to allow for a direct comparison of different catalyst variations during catalyst development. For this purpose, we have four 5-in-1 screening units with five reactors in one oven, two high-throughput 12-in-1 units with 12 reactors and also couple of single reactor units. The remainder of our units are being used for process and performance testing of our commercial catalysts, both hydrocracking and hydrotreating. As an example, for clients we can test various process conditions and all different unit configurations on their specific feedstock. We do comparative studies of our commercial catalysts to gain knowledge and we do tests to obtain data for development and improvement of in-house models on kinetics, yields, product properties and so on. We can test different feedstocks. At the moment, tests of especially renewable and more unconventional feedstocks are in high demand. Or we can just test out new concepts. For these purposes, we have 25 units with different layouts, including two units specifically designed for processing advanced renewable feedstocks, which can be quite smelly and difficult to handle and process. For simulation of the hydrocracking units, we have a single stage recycle hydrocracking pilot unit and two two stage hydrocracking pilot units. And furthermore, we have a HDS, HDA pilot unit and three micro units which are used for model studies. As you can see, we have many different units at our facilities, but the standard layout of most units is more or less the same and can be overall schematically represented like this. The pilot plant units at Topsoil are once through trickle bed reactor systems using 100% pure hydrogen as street gas and no recycle of gas or oil. During a test, the feedstock is pumped into the system and mixed with hydrogen before entering the reactor, where the hydrotreating or hydrocracking reactions take place. This system is depicted with one reactor, but there can be more reactors in series, in which case it is possible to test separate hydrotreating and hydrocracking reactors. The units are operated isothermally and with a typical catalyst volume of 100 to 200 milliliters. Each reactor is equipped with a high pressure separator followed by a low pressure uh, stabilizer system with nitrogen stripping for removal of gases and other non-condensed light hydrocarbons formed in the reactor. The exit gases from the HPS and the LPS are combined prior to sampling. Typically, small liquid oil product samples are being taken out on a daily basis to monitor the progress of the test, while a larger oil sample, along with a gas sample, are being taken out when completing a mass balance at the end of a condition. Before the pilot test is started, the catalyst should be dried, weighed, diluted and loaded in the reactor. The catalyst is diluted with silicon carbide, also known as carborundum, and loaded in an isothermal stainless steel tubular reactor. 
The dilution of the catalyst is important, as it will improve the catalyst wetting and utilization, while also facilitating a homogeneous liquid flow with an improved plug flow behavior down the reactor. After the catalyst is loaded in the reactor, the test is performed according to this illustrative workflow, which I should say is of course somewhat simplified and relies on the test proceeding without complications. First, the oxidic catalyst must be activated by sulfiding it with a sulfur-doped VGO or gas oil. The process begins with a drying step and is followed by a flooding of the catalyst before the actual sulfidation is carried out by gradually increasing the temperature until the maximum temp sulfidation temperature is reached and kept during a holding period. The feedstock is then introduced and a preconditioning step is conducted to ensure optimal activity and stable performance of the catalyst, whereafter the parameters of the first test conditions are set. Sometimes the parameters are fixed and sometimes they should be varied to reach a specific objective. The test is evaluated on a daily basis by taking out small oil samples, which are analyzed for the properties relevant to this specific test. When the system is stable and lined out, has been reached, a mass balance is conducted to verify the measured feed flows. This is done by taking out a larger oil sample along with a gas sample of the exit gas and evaluating the conservation of mass in the physical system. Or Put in another way, does what goes in also come out? Only if the conservation of mass is within specific limits and deemed satisfactory, the condition is accepted. The mass balance is also used to estimate the hydrogen consumption during the condition, and if needed, the mass balance oil sample can be fractionated and the specific cuts can be analyzed. Depending on the test, it can be interesting to take out an interstage sample, which is an oil sample taken out between the reactors and analyze it to gain information on the product coming from the individual reactors. When the condition has been completed, a new condition can be conducted by repeating the last steps of the workflow. This process is performed until the test is finished and the unit is shut down. As you can probably imagine, the daily operations of all our units, more with multiple lines, generate a large number of both oil and gas samples, all of which must be analyzed as quickly as possible to allow us to closely follow uh, the development of the test and react in a timely manner. For this, we have our own advanced analysis lab. Here we can perform a wide range of the standard ASTM analytical methods used in the refinery industry. An overview of the most standard and commonly used methods is shown in this table. Besides the ASTM methods, we have developed several in-house advanced methods which enables us to perform in-depth studies of the nature of feeds and products from the hydrotreating processes. In the recent years, focus has shifted from conventional fossil feedstocks to renewable feedstocks, and so has the tests we perform. Depending on the amount of feedstock available, we have two ways of assessing the processability of the feed, either by analyzing a small sample of the oil or to perform a pilot test. In this way, we have tested a variety of different feeds, ranging from simple vegetable oils like soy or rapeseed, over more exotic ones like carinata and tell oil, to the advanced next generation renewable feeds of plastic and biomass uh, paralysis oils. All of the feeds have been analyzed at our facilities, while most of them have also been tested in a specific pilot test. The pilot tests are typically done by testing the pure renewable feedstock, but in some cases the test was performed in co-processing mode, 
where the renewable feedstock is mixed with a fossil feedstock before being fed to the reactor. This is done either to account for a client's particular needs or to ease the processability of difficult to process feedstocks like the pyrolysis oils. This was a short introduction to our testing facilities and experience with renewable feedstocks at Heldetopsø R&D. Thank you for listening.